And next, we get to move next door to Duet Preserve, and we have with us Alyssa Powers with uh, Manatee County. Good morning. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here and giving me this privilege to talk about Duet Preserve. My name is Alyssa Powers from Manatee County Natural Resources, and I am the Environmental Project Manager for Mining Services. But yes, the title does say Hydrologic Restoration for Duet Preserve. So that will make itself clear in a moment as to why I'm speaking on it. Um, but Duet Preserve is a gem in our county, and it just excites me every time I get to talk about it because we, um, we have such beautiful preserves out on our, our coast, coastal systems, and everybody comes and says how much they appreciate those. And I always say, great. Now go to Duet Preserve, because you'll love that one just as much, if not more. So I'm going to give you a history lesson in Duet Preserve. Um, it is located in East Manatee County. Thankfully, Sandy came before and had some very nice maps of it. It is mostly wetlands with palmetto prairies, flatwoods, stream sloughs, um, gorgeous land, 21,000 acres. And, of course, the sad story that most of us know in this room is, you know, during the settlement, European settlement periods and through the cattling and timbering and then agriculture, a lot of changes have altered the landscape. And um, in particular, there's one on here. Oh, this is one of our main ditches right here that we were, we were dealing with, with agricultural lands. And then uh, phosphate mining started taking an interest in our properties in about uh, the 1960s. But the history keeps going, and in 1967, we completed the Lake Manatee Reservoir. And what most people don't realize in Manatee County is that our water supply is two-thirds percent surface water, and one-third of that is groundwater. So this picture illustrates our surface water color versus groundwater color, and those are some of our issues that we deal with at the, the plant when we're purifying and providing the water resources to our over 300,000 residents that we provide water to. So in 67, we started that. Then in 75, Wingate Creek Mine got its development approvals. In 1978, Four Corners Mine got its development approvals. So we're looking at our Lake Manatee Reservoir and the watershed and having ag uses, mining uses, and what were we gonna do about that? So we started working on the Lake Manatee Watershed Protection and we got that passed in 1981. Then um, along with that, we started purchasing the major portions or acquiring the major portions of Duet Preserve, some in 84, 86, and again in 1996. And with that, we had the land management plan passed in 1996. So our watershed, which Sandy had another picture of, um, Duet Preserve is in the middle. The watershed is outlined in blue. Lake Manatee is right here. And the well field is right here for the, the Jays. The Lake Manatee watershed is 129 square miles. Within the watershed, we have six square miles of mining, and 33 square miles makes up Duet Preserve. The other purple areas, we got the, the Coker Creek, the Well Field, and the Gilly Creek Preserve. So we total 38% of our watershed in public ownership or, or conservation, some, somewhere around that, that number. So it's a very high percentage that we were able to uh, preserve, and with that, we of course immediately started about talking about hydrologic restoration for all of those agricultural impacts that we had. And I think you know our our basic project goals, everybody you know is used to agrees agrees upon reestablishing the isolated wetland hydro periods, improving the habitat for fish and wildlife attenuating the flooding, improving the base flow down 
to the Lake Manatee Reservoir and restoring the historic flow paths. We had a lot of large ditching where we used to have slough systems, so we wanted to restore those sloughs. And of course, you can't do a presentation without the pretty pictures. I wanted to have that rotate all of those wildlife and, and, um, and plants, but unfortunately, I don't have the skills Brooke has making that happen today. But I did get that one, which is our multi-floral grass pink, and proud that I actually took that picture, because <laughs> so I'm a horrible photographer. But our project design was also very simplistic in that um, we had to use minimal equipment available. We walked with GPS all of the ditches. Um, we identified the best places to put ditch blocks to backfill ditches. We used existing spoil along the way. Uh, we did not bring in any borrowed material on these um, except for the that weir structure. So in 2004, we got our first phase of the project, which is in the headwaters, and we did 64 ditch blocks in this location, one weir and two wet crossings. We approximate about 438 acres of wetland restoration, and our total cost was $67,000. Um, and partners, I do want to mention partners really quick, because we had partners with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, U.S. EPA, um, DEP, NRCS, Florida Communities Trust. We leverage monies wherever we can and, and partnerships, and we really appreciate the partners that we've had. Then in 2011, when I came on, um, we partnered with Mosaic and looked at our our proper, that's what I call it, do it preserve proper versus do it preserve headwaters, and I'm going to show you maps in just a second. And we backfilled all, as many of the ditches as we could in that case. We tried not to do ditch blocks because you still have, you know, remaining portions of the ditch when you use ditch blocks. You have that stagnant water sitting behind there, mosquito breeding, all that sort of thing. So we tried to, to fill as much of the ditches as we could, and uh, in that one we had a total cost of 99000 in 333 acres of wetlands, the cost is a little higher again because of all the earthwork that we that we did. This is Duet Headwaters, and these show all the ditch blocks here. So again, when you think back to the historical map, the main ditch that ran through um, that I pointed to was right here. But all this slough system, all this up here, it had all been connected, and now it's all isolated again. And then we have an outfall right here. The most recent one was, this is the, the main duet preserve here. The east fork of Manatee River runs this side, and the north fork is on this side. The kind of bluish green color, that's the 333 acres estimate. And the lighter blue color, that's the NWI wetland layers. So. In probability, it's about 500 acres of enhancement. I'm being conservative here and saying direct, direct wetland enhancements is about 333 acres when you map it. All of the remaining yellow, oh, sorry, wrong map. So the, the yellow lines were the existing ditches that were all mapped, and then there's a brown line over top of it, and that will show you where we were able to backfill. So there is more work to be done. and all the rest of the yellow lines here are the remaining ditches on Duet Preserve. And our next phase of restoration, which is going to start out um, this year, again with the assistance of Mosaic, we're going to hire um, a consultant to look at modeling it because we're getting to the point where we have our offsite uh, private property owners that we need to work with, and we want to look more at the nutrient cycling attenuation process in, in some of these areas here next to ag lands. So look for that coming in the next year or so. Our monitoring program has actually been pretty small so far. Um, and I know a lot of you in the room, and you experience this all the time, you have your acquisition cost, and then you have your management budget and your monitoring budget, and you notice how they go 
substantially down as you go. So it seems like the monitoring, everybody wants the data and nobody wants to pay for it. So we've documented, you know, our mortality of trees and shrubs during our hydro periods return. We've done some short-term water levels recording. But the other exciting news is that we are partnering with Quest and we're going to start a new monitoring phase with remote sensing. And we're going to do a longer term study utilizing the multispectral imagery to look at soil moisture and document hydro period changes over time. And we're going to go back and, and look at old aerials for the headwaters as well as the main portion of Duet Preserve and in the, the future for prioritizing our future restoration and in aiding in watershed planning. And that's where um, I think I need to stop and talk with Jim Beaver about using his spreadsheet because we've been couching this all in ecosystem services. That That's the way everybody wants it. Decision makers all want to hear about ecosystem services. And I know I stole this from somewhere. So down here it says supporting services. And we're always working in supporting services. Nutrient cycling, biomass production, water cycling, um, and up, then it goes up to regulating services, so the water purification, uh, just having clean water available for the residents, uh, provisioning, and then the cultural, the aesthetical, the recreation, all that, that sort of thing. And this arrow here, somebody describes as the perceived value to humans. And I, I don't think it's quite linear like that, um, because everybody has their own perceptions. So somebody might perceive uh, one value being higher than another, and, and that's why it gets very difficult to put values on some of these services. But we, we went through the exercise looking at our original project goals and saying, well, how do they fit into the ecosystem services lingo that everybody's using now? which is the benefits to the human population that's received from the functions that occur in the ecosystem, or in this case, in our restoration project. And so we came up with the, the services that our restoration projects were providing was the maintenance of healthy waterways, water filtration and water purification, the regulation of the river flow and the surficial water levels, mitigating to droughts and floods, and the maintenance of, of the biodiversity. And then... The next question that always gets asked is, what's the value? And this one, I'm still working on valuing these ecosystem services. And so far, just picking a couple to show you today, the, the usable water, the clean water that we have to provide to the residents, um, the social value comes from this Gulf of Mexico Ecosystem Services Valuation Database. With this range here, it's a value of, of clean water in across America, basically. And then th the social value is the avoided cost of having to do the treatment, the water purification. That's the value that our wetlands have, but it's not money in our pocket. It's not money that we get to go and do more restoration. It's, it's an avoided cost, and if something happens to our wetlands, then, it, then you end up paying it. So what we are looking at is the actual cost that the water treatment facility pays in their algae control program, which is $1,650 per day. If that was 365 days a year, that's over $500,000. It's not 365 days a year that they're paying it, but I went to the utility folks and I said, how, how, how can, can we normalize the, the water since 2004 and can we come up with how we've done, you know, how the projects have, have assisted in water purification? And they said, oh, sorry, Alyssa, but we also changed our chemicals that we were using and we put some deep water circulatory stuff in the lake and so it's not a direct correlation anymore. So we're still working on that. Um, the water retention is just that attributing to the, the base flow and having the water there when we need it to, to be there. And I, I do not have a value for this. I mean, for this it would be like building another reservoir and, and today's cost, building another reservoir with the permitting and all of that, 
it's near impossible, millions, millions upon millions of dollars saved in having 21,000 acres of wetlands preserved and restored upstream of the system. And then our recreation, um, I just pulled out the hunting value on this one, which the average cost that they're showing across America is that 16 to 355. And we have, we're, we're pulling in about 50,000 to 60,000 a year in our hunt program. That does not include um, all of our other outreach and education programs that we have ongoing out there and those aesthetic cultural values that are obtained from them that again to put a cost on that is, is just very difficult. But our market value of what we bring in is about $50,000. So in summary, um, just I think to rename this, maybe just to rename my presentation, um, persisting in our restoration and, and our um, management goals in Manatee County since 1967 when the reservoir was put in. Um, people have worked effortlessly to continue to preserve, to restore, to acquire more. And, and we've been very successful with that. Again, our partners, um, we couldn't do it without them either. And so our watershed overlay district, 1981, that was put in place. It has worked very effectively. Um, we, we have had no new mining in Manatee County, um, like Manatee Watershed, since we put that into place. Um, they're finishing out their existing mine projects there. And, um, and we've also been able to continue with our restoration projects by leveraging these, these funds from other places and continued to protect our environmental capital in Manatee County. And that's all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you. Who has questions for Alyssa? Hydrologic restoration, a really complicated, time-consuming, something that you need to do a lot of pre-planning to implement, but the rewards are well worth it. Congratulations on getting that done, or started. Can you speak to the changes in water quantity entering Duet Preserve with the various land use changes around the preserve? Um, at this point, no, we cannot. We have, there's just a stream gauge down above the Lake Manatee Reservoir, and that takes into account both the, the North Fork and the East Fork of the Manatee River. And hopefully in our remote sensing data, and we will, ha we will be flying new, but we will also take old aerials and, um, and try to evalu evaluate those as well. We might be able to get to some of that. Any additional questions? Oh. Intrigued by the remote sensing for the monitoring, what parameters do you think you have in mind for looking at? Really, we're gonna start out with soil moisture. It, that's our number one parameter. And um, I am and technically probably not qualified to answer that, that's why we're <laughs> We're working with Quest, and um, and they've hired um, a professional. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>